Hi, I'm Tamela Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of December 9th. We'll begin with Comet Ison. And here it is, it's the final approach. He's coming in on the inside. Ison's looking pretty good. He's coming around to the final bend. He's cutting it awfully close. Oh, he looks like he's gonna make it, but oh no! There it goes, there's dust and coma everywhere. This is a sad day in Comet sports history. Yeah, sure enough, Ison didn't make it with its close encounter of the sun. But what do you expect? The sun had the home field advantage. So the officials say that uh, Ison now is a magnitude 11, which means it's definitely not visible with the naked eye. We're gonna have to wait for really big telescopes like the Hubble, who will start imaging it around the middle of December to do some comet forensics for us to find out exactly what's left of, of Ison and where do we go from here. Now, as for the sun, it's business as usual. We had two filament ejections earlier this week that have given to us a really nice geomagnetic storm. Here's the first one lifting off on the northwest. You can see it as it lifts off. Then there's another one you see right here. It hits with a flare, and it comes from the southwest. Now, this one's moving much faster. So what happens is that you get a one-two punch. You get the second one coming off and hitting the first one and actually pushing the first one faster and intensifying it. And now when we switch to coronagraphs, you can see that first ejection is actually coming off in two pieces. Bam, right there. It comes off this way. We're worried more about the one that's going northwest of us. And then bam, just shortly thereafter comes a second ejection. You can see as a, being a big halo there. And that one moves much more quickly. And when we switch to prediction models, this is Enlil. You can see that dense structure coming out to the west of us. Now remember, there's another slower structure in front of it. So the fast one hits that slower one and really compresses it and makes it stronger. So it's kind of a one-two punch and they almost hit us both at the same time. As a matter of fact, when you flip the impact footprint like this, you can actually see that structure hits right in the middle of Earth. So on top of this two solar storms, we have this high-speed stream structure that's hitting us. And as a matter of fact, it actually all comes a little bit early. You can see right here in the solar wind, you start seeing the impact of that. It's actually thrashed our magnetic shield already. And our KP index, you can already see the storm level is pretty high for the past few hours. So we're having problems with GPS and cell phones and your internet, expect that. We're also getting reports of beautiful aurora. You can see that in the top part of the United States, it's reaching down. And also the aurora australis is also beginning to glow. So here we're getting beautiful reports of aurora Here's Fairbanks, Alaska. We get beautiful aurora in Wisconsin and Green Bay. And then of course in Finland, Lapland, Finland. And more are coming in all the time. So what does the sun have in store for us for the rest of this week? Well, these are synoptic charts that show all of the active regions all over the sun. The two vertical lines denote the east and west limb and they bracket the Earth's field of view. Now, when we begin to put this chart in motion, you can see all of this activity on the far side. There's a lot of cluster of active regions that are really beginning to rotate onto the disk now. That's why every time you see the disk, it looks really bright on the east limb. And as we return to the disk, there are two regions we're watching. 1917, as it begins to rotate onto the east limb, and 1916, that's transiting the middle of the disk and moving up to the west now. 1916 is growing quite rapidly and becoming really magnetically complicated. As a matter of fact, it actually sent us an M class flare along with a partially earth directed solar storm just a couple days ago, which might impact us on the 10th, so we'll see. Uh, and you can see here in color, all of that color shows a lot of magnetic mixing and it continues to get that way, so we might see a few more M class flares before this thing rotates off to the west. So this week looks to be pretty exciting. We're in the middle of a geomagnetic storm, so expect to have some GPS and cell phone, internet, and mobile broadband issues for the next day or two. And then again, we might see some effects when another storm blows by us uh, around the 10th. So more communication issues possibly, and maybe some more aurora. Um, but uh, NOAA right now is giving us only about a 25% chance for M-class flares, so expect that to diminish as uh, Region 1916 goes by, but then we have all that new activity coming in on the East Limb. So just be prepared because there might be some more activity in store for us. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.